Hey guys, Winter Meat here, and today we'll be making 5 motion graphics effects in Blender, like the ones you can see on the screen right now. So first, we'll be making square spirals. This effect can be extended to other sorts of spirals, but uh, we'll be making square ones today. So make sure you have your render engine to Eevee, and I'm just going to darken the background, uh, just as part of setting up the environment. Hit 7, go to top view, and set your camera by Control shift o and then you can set it to orthographic. Then you can make a plane, inset it in edit mode, and cut out a square ring. Next, in order to cut stuff out of this, we'll add a single vertex at the middle of the scene, and then we'll extend it, and we'll be using the screw modifier in order to make it sort of wrap around in order to hide parts of this square ring. Um, and let's keyframe it. So we'll go to frame 60, and we'll set to 360, and at frame 0, the angle will be 0. Now, we need to actually have these intersecting, so we'll add a solidify modifier, turn up the thickness, and you can see that we have this sort of pie cutting this out of a square ring. Um, now, in order to actually cut it, we'll use the boolean intersect function. Uh, make sure you have bool tool enabled in your add-ons, and it's control shift B. We can add an emission text, or sorry, shader to this, and that's all we really need to do. Now, in order to duplicate this effect, we'll just select both of these objects. We'll make another one, and we're we're in the animation tab, so we can see all of the other effects. And we can just minimize these, drag the keyframe handles, and move it. Don't worry about the one on the top moving. Um, those are that's a summary, so it shows everything in your scene where all the keyframes are. And just move each of your objects by a little keyframe shift, and there you go. Square spirals. Now you can change these to rings or 3D shapes or whatever you want. All right, time for effect number two, motion trails. So again, we'll start by setting up the environment in the same way. Make sure an EV, turning down the background, uh, and setting the camera in top orthographic view. Now, in order to, the, to do this, we'll define a curve for the actual particle to move along. Uh, we can go in top view to do this, because that's where our camera will be, and just make sort of a squiggly path. Uh, you can use the E tool to extend the curve, and we'll just set the camera there. Make sure everything's centered in the way you want it, and this can be really any curve you want. You can always change the handles in order to increase the smoothness of the transitions, and we'll be refining the resolution of this anyways in the final render. So make a circle, and make sure it's at the origin, and fill it. You can scale it down a bit, and we're going to attach this to the curve with the curve modifier. Uh, so in order to animate its position, first set it to the origin. So even though it won't be at the origin, make sure the the uh, particle's origin is at the origin of the scene by Alt-G. Then we can just move it along the x-axis, and it will move along the curve as if it were being displaced alongside it. Now we can keyframe this by setting a location keyframe at the start and at the end of our animation. And remember, we're just going to be moving along the x-axis. Now, in order to alter the scale of this, uh, all we need to do is keyframe the scaling. And again, we'll only scale on the x-axis. And you can see that this scales along the length of the curve, which is pretty cool. Now, you'll also see that this is a bit jagged looking. So um, first, let's add an emission texture to, or shader again to see it. And then we can end up increasing the resolution of the scene. In order to make some interesting colors, you can abuse the geometry node by applying a uh, the position vector. I don't actually know what sort of inputs that gives you, how you would turn that uh, three-dimensional vector into a color. Maybe it just maps x, y, z to RGB, but this is abuse regardless. Then uh, you can use a color ramp to modulate the colors it will go through, although your uh, mileage may vary on this because this is really some serious abuse of the geometry node. Next, we can apply some subdivision modifiers. Make sure you change both the render and viewport quality uh, in order to smooth the curve. And then we can increase the actual curves resolution by changing the uh, resolution preview uh, and the render quality. And there you go. We have a much smoother curve now with a color changing particle with a motion trail that goes along it, all without motion blur. And here's a look at the effect. All right, so now for effect number three, starbursts. 
So again, we'll set up the environment, turning down the darkness, bye bye default cube, and we're going to make a cube. So this will be our star particle, and um, I say particle in quotes, we'll add a curve modifier, or sorry, just a, a normal curve. Um, then we'll add an array to this cube. We can change the offset so it's sort of spaced out. And these are going to be our individual particles. We can attach it to the curve with the curve modifier and then sort of change this offset so that it looks kind of like they're evenly spaced without any strange gaps. Now, um, you'll want to add a vertex group. So this is new. Um, let's just select the top two vertices and assign the a vertex group. We can call it outer. Now, uh, make sure you apply both of those modifiers so now your circle is no longer needed, and we'll add another circle, but this will be an empty circle. Um, now you can scale down your particles and keyframe the scaling. Um, the timing of this really depends on you, just look at what looks good. And now to make it sort of burst. Uh, in order to do, to do this, we'll be using the hook modifier to sort of uh, sort of stick the outer particles or the, the outer vertices onto this curve. And so you can sort of see what this effect does. And by modulating the strength property, uh, we can see how that alters it. And so if we animate that strength property, we can have an animated uh, sort of burst effect. So I'm just going to set the strength in the middle to zero, then somewhere further along to one, and then once it's out at the edge, I'll set it back to zero. And you can see that our particles um, conform to the curve more and they sort of get magnetized to the sides um, closer to the middle, and then they uh, the strength decreases afterwards. Now we can add another emission texture. Um, and we can also fade it through by using this mix shader trick. So make sure you have your settings uh, set to alpha blend in the blend mode so we can actually have transparency. And we'll mix an emission node with a uh, transparency node. And then setting our factor to zero will give us full emission and setting our factor to one will give us full transparency. And all we have to do is keyframe this. So we can keyframe the factor from zero uh, to one, and then you'll see that our opacity of our object will just fade to zero, which is pretty useful. And you can always change where the position of this is. Um, I don't know too much about the actual principles of motion graphics, so I'm sure there are some good timing guidelines, and you might want to look those up for yourself. And you can see how, uh, as we keyframe this, the transparency is changing, which is a very useful trick. Just make sure that you have alpha blend as your blend mode, otherwise this will definitely not work in Eevee, though it will work in cycles. Now, if we want to duplicate this effect, uh, we can do sort of the same thing we did before with the square spirals. Um, and remember here that we can sort of change a lot of the parameters a lot more easily than in the timeline. So if you want to have multiple of these effects, just duplicate that uh, middle circle. You can expand it a bit and then move all of the keyframes that belong to that um, in one direction or another. Make sure you have your materials as separate if you want them to uh, have different animation speeds. So they don't both don't start fading out at the same time because they're the same material. Just make sure to separate them. You can hit the number two next to the material name in the material panel. And there you go. Since we all of these have a slight frame offset, you'll see them being slightly delayed. And so this is what that sort of effect looks like. All right, next one. These will be transitions, and this will be a sort of staggered panel transition. So we have the scene set up as we had before, orthographic camera and all, and we're going to add a plane here, just at the corner. We'll move up the origin uh, to the bottom of the square, and then we're going to duplicate this a couple times. I think five is a reasonable number. Make sure these are all nicely pressed up against each other, uh, and then we'll add an empty there, which will control everything. So we added a 
uh, vertex group called hook to each of these squares, which would just be the top two uh, vertices. And we can just apply the hook modifier with varying strengths so that when we move, uh, when we move that empty, all we have to do is keyframe that specific movement and then everything will follow it. So uh, you would apply the vertex group the same way as we did in the starburst. We're just selecting the top two vertices um, and we are going to apply a new vertex group to those. Um, and now we can just go to the initial frame, make sure everything's hidden, keyframe the empties location, and then go to the final frame. Um, make sure everything is shown, and then keyframe again. We're giving everything a nice emissive texture. And you can sort of mess with this. You can, max, you can mess with this shader however you want, but uh, I think just a single color would probably look best. This will be a while of me trying to figure out other color schemes, but honestly, you should probably just go with a, a flat color. All right, so now for the last example, this will be a, a panel split transition. So we'll have the same environment set up as we had before, and this time we're going to create a plane. Make sure your camera is set to orthographic, and then we'll scale this plane up to the size of the camera, plus a little bit, just, for, just to be sure. And we'll use the knife tool, which is K, um, and then hit space, then V, and then we can separate the cut we just make through the middle. Uh, now keyframing this will be pretty straightforward. All we have to do is um, we'll just set their location initially, and then we'll go to the final frame of this, which I set to be frame 20, and we'll move it outside of the bounds of the camera. Now you can move it so that that origin is right on the corners of the camera, so it won't be shown once this animation is over. Then we're going to parent their locations to this empty. Uh, this is an, an important point, especially if we have to duplicate this. Otherwise, uh, keyframing their vertical location data is going to get very messed up. Now we can apply an emission shader to everything. Uh, make sure to name it well. Not like me. And then we can just duplicate this and have the same effect staggered multiple times. Since we have an orthographic shader, you don't need to worry about scaling because all the things that are parallel in this scene will remain parallel. Um, and we can sort of shift the keyframes in the timeline editor in order to see, uh, in order to see a, a staggered effect. Now you can change these colors. I would suggest choosing colors that are analogous, but you do you. And so you can see how we have our effects staggered. But you should probably try to make sure that the end keyframe is about the same time. All right, so I'm going to make another panel. Make sure each of the panels on the seam sort of have the same uh, shader so they don't have different colors, which would look kind of weird. And you can just duplicate this and repeat the process. So all we need to do is go into this uh, panel for animation, and then we can just give everything a slight offset. So remember, we have two things to keyframe, so we'll just select the pairs of two, and then we'll just shift everything over a bit. And you can see how everything's delayed like that, which is a good effect. You can always change the ending time of some of the animations and tweak this to your heart's content. You can always add some visual effects like bloom, uh, but I don't think it will make too much of a difference in the scene. And this is what it looks like. All right, so that was five motion graphics effects in Blender. Now for a quick summary, if you want to move only part of a mesh, you can use the hook modifier or you can use shape keys if you want to look up how to do that. Though the hook modifier is generally more uh, visual and obvious how to use it. If you want to selectively hide and show bits of your geometry, you can use the Boolean modifier. Um, in case you want to have something moving on a path, you definitely want to use the curve modifier in order to confine a particle or object onto that path. And you can mix the emission and transparent shaders with alpha blend toggled um, in order to modulate the opacity of an effect. All right, I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and 
Uh, I'll be making more of these videos in the future, uh, particularly about typography and applying these motion graphics effects there, as well as how to overlay these effects and transitions on top of your own videos using the video sequence editor. Alright, see you in the next one. Bye!